This is Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today this will be like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom? Leave a rating and a brief written review. It'll enable other excellent people like you to be able to locate this podcast. And I'm looking for folks that I can come alongside and help assist and coach. And if you want to see what the possibilities are, go to drronblake.com forward slash call. Dr. Ron Blake, forward slash call. You'll get on my calendar and I'll give you a call and we'll see what the possibilities are. Today I want to talk to you about something that I have just implemented within the last year or so and it has really super supercharged, maybe even turbocharged some things in my life and I'm just simply going to call it a 90-day goal. At one time, I was kind of making up the title Sprint Goal, but if you Google that, you'll see that that belongs to a particular discipline. And I am really applying this to the area, not just of goal setting, but of getting something done and moving through it in a set amount of time. It's not instantly like you have to get it done tomorrow, but you don't have a lot of time to um, mess around with it. It's really kind of a hybrid thing. I don't know if you've ever read Brian Moran's book, The 12-Week Year, which the genesis of all of that, and basically if you could just still it all the way down, it is many people are trying to accomplish something in a year, and we have this false sense of security that a year is a long time. So he goes down to a 12-week of saying, let's get have a 12-week year, forcing ourselves to get working on our year-end goals. I mean, here it is in my, where I'm recording this, we're in the last uh, quarter of the year getting ready to enter into the last quarter, really the last third of the year, I guess would be more technical. And there are some of you that haven't even started on your goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year. And I know there's been political unrest and pandemics and all sorts of things And I get that. So I want to tell you what kind of got me. I'd used it some before, but just recently what got me out of it was go out of the funk that the culture has put me in, the world's put me in, was a 90-day challenge. I was able to meet a health and a financial goal in the 90 days uh, that just preceded, and I've set three more goals, and I promise you in three months I'm going to come back and identify what the three were, and in fact, did I reach them? One has to do with health, health. one has to do with a, res- a writing assignment, and one has to do with a- another financial something that I'm trying to do. So here's how it works. Identify. So hopefully, you would identify something that is a-, a dream, a goal, something you need to get done. Uh, obviously, it can be in your personal life, social life, spiritual life. You can do it financially, career-wise. It it really doesn't matter. Now, I don't believe you could put 50 things into this. I I did one, one quarter, and really got it done early. And now this quarter, I'm doing three because um, um, it happened in such an interesting, wonderful, wonderful way. So I'm going to just kind of break it all down uh, for you. The first thing is, uh, let's let's look at eight things that need to happen. First, just identify what it is you're wanting to do. I'm, I'm thinking to lose 100 pounds in, in 90 days is going to be rather aggressive. Uh, to make a million dollars, unless you're really running in some wonderful circles, that's going to be difficult. So you need to identify what the challenge is, what needs to happen, and how it needs, uh, in fact, to happen. So you need to decide from what area it happens, and uh, we will we will go uh, from there. So is it a spiritual goal? Is it a physical, financial? Again, is it a relationship need? Is it something from your vocation? Whatever it is, you just need to identify it. Now, the second is what you always hear said at this time. You have to break it down. If this is your 90-day challenge you're giving yourself, how are you going to break that down? Because that's three months, that's just a few weeks, and you're not going to have a lot of time to uh, dream about it or take time off. 
you're going to have to break it down into very actionable plans. So if it's a health goal, a financial goal, a spiritual goal, makes no difference to me what it is. You are going to have to break it down. And you'll know how to do that. If you want to lose uh, 12 pounds, well, you've got to lose four pounds a month. So you need to break that down. What? How are you changing your eating habits? How are you going to do the proper amount of exercise and movement to make that happen? You know how many pay periods that you're going to have in the next 90 days. And if you're going to pay down debt or you're going to save for some specific something, I don't know that you have to say, I'm just saving in general. It might motivate you more if there's an, something you need to do, some project, some item that you need, and you're going to need to break that down. Um, you'll need to you'll need to do that, but you have to break it down. Um, the third thing that I would say to you that's very very important is put it on your calendar. What I have discovered is you have to break it down into time chunks or time blocks, however you describe it. If if it's serious enough that you would like to reach it, believe you can reach it and accomplish it in 90 days, it's not going to happen just being on your to-do list. Most people have learned over a while when things aren't progressing to ignore their to-do list. You can't ignore your calendar. Schedule it. If you're afraid that somebody else is going to see it, then you can give it some other kind of a name. Uh, whatever you want to call it, but put it on your calendar. Um, here's what happens. You say this is important. You say this is something you feel led that you ought to do, that you need to accomplish, but then you never give any time to it. That's why yearly goals fail so often. We have these grandiose ideas, spectacular plans of what we're going to do, and we give ourselves a false sense of security by saying, it's only January. If I mess up January, it's 11 months away. I still have plenty of time. And for most of us in the culture that I'm living in, if you give yourself lots of time, you'll have lots of time with which to do nothing. You have to shorten the time span. It clears the focus, but it has to be on the calendar. And here, and I'll talk about this a little later, but let me introduce it right now. Whatever they are, however many you choose, one, two, or three, whatever, you have to give it 20 to 30 minutes a day or you're not being real. If, you, if it's not worth dedicating 20 to 30 minutes of your day to accomplish it, it's not for real. You're just kidding yourself. And then I hear you saying, well, you don't know how busy I am. I have children. I have to pack their lunches. I have to fix their breakfast. I have to do the laundry. I have to work overtime. And, and I get that. Then you probably should back down to one. And you could, if you really are motivated, and if it's really important, I believe you can find a way to shave 20 minutes out of your day in order to apply yourself to that task, that dream, that goal. So you'll have to write them down. You know that goals um, written have a much larger chance, a better chance of being done. Here's what I did during these 90-day challenges when I'm doing them myself. In my morning journaling, when I write, both in the morning and the evening, I write those goals out as if they have happened. I, and whatever your goal is, I'm going to lose X amount of pounds. I'm going to uh, go running. Uh, I'm going to save $25 out of every paycheck. I'm going to open a retirement account and start funding it. I'm going to read the Bible every day. Whatever it is. Write it out every day. Keep it. If it's that important and it's captured your imagination, then it's important for you to write it down every day. Now, uh, I do it electronically. I know there are some who say there's some magic connection between your finger and a pen or a pencil and a paper in your brain and your heart. I, I get that. I understand that. I think the important thing is to write it out. Not, not just as a habit that I can check off my list but as something that reinforces that this is a goal, this is something you're working on, this is something you're committed to, and do it every day. Now, you can write it down again in the evening. What I do as a part of my evening routine is I look back over, for instance, right now I have three of them, and I reflect on them in the evening. I don't, I don't write them back out again, but I read them. And then I ask myself, did I 
do something today that will enable and help me to reach these goals within a set 90-day period. Now, the 90-day period is not a moving target. If you start September 1, then you say, I'm going through November 30. January, February, March, April 1, I'll move on to something else. You, you do it, it's not just a moving target. Well, I didn't do well on these days, so I'm going to go over the next 90 days. It is for a concrete start and finish time, and so I reflect. Again, I reflect. If this is this big a deal, did I give 20 minutes to it today? If you don't give 20 minutes to what you're working on, it's not a goal. It's hardly even an aspiration. It's more on the border of wishful thinking or a very weak daydream. So reflect in the evening. If you can look back over your day, did my day reflect that? The sixth is focus. Surely by now you're not buying into the myth of multitasking. Multitasking is simply a way to mess up three or four things all at the same time. Give your focus to one thing at a time. Now, there are time chunks later in my day where I'm answering email, returning text, signing documents, and sometimes I will overlap those, but they are low energy and they don't take a lot of um, the energy that starting something new does. But you have to focus. Again, get a timer, shut your door, turn all of your uh, notifications on your electronic devices off, and give yourself to 20 to 30 minutes to focus on the matter at hand. At every, after every one of those sessions, give yourself five, seven minutes to rest, reflect, do some other things that have come up. But you have to focus. Right now, the major problem is a focus and attention span seem to be shorter and shorter. And if you're going to accomplish something that you really desire to accomplish in 90 days, you have to focus. Number seven, for most of us, we have to hold ourselves accountable. I've just held myself accountable because I've said in three months on this podcast, in 90 days, I'm going to tell you each one of them and whether I accomplished it or not. I, you, it, I, I maybe can disappoint myself. We've all learned to disappoint ourselves. That's called a, oftentimes our to-do list. If we didn't get it done after four or five days, we ignore it. But once we go public and once we hold our, have other, tell others what we're going to do, we are held accountable. So tell somebody, tell someone that will help hold you accountable. And then the last one I want to talk to you about is, is win the day. You're not going to win every day. But if you could win three or four of the days of the week, you'll keep moving forward. You aren't going to win every hour of every day, but if you could just win three to four hours of the day. Well, Dr. Ron, what in the world are you meaning by winning? I'm meaning doing the things you say you're going to do. Accomplishing the things you're setting out to accomplish. Working your way through the things that need to be done. That's what winning the day. So see, you don't have to win every hour. Just win three or four hours of concentrated focus. You'll be amazed what happens. You really will win the day. You don't have to win every day. You'll have an off day. You'll be sick. You'll be on vacation. You'll have a crisis. You'll have distractions. So you don't have to win every day to win the week. But if you win three or four days, you'll win the week. You don't have to win every moment of the month to win the month. But if you if you win two and a half, three of the weeks of a month, you will win the month. You will get it accomplished. I challenge you, my brothers and sisters. Why don't you find something that you know you need to get done? And then put yourself on a 90-day challenge, identify what it is, break it down into its parts of what you need to do, memorialize it by putting it on your calendar, then write that goal or the two or three goals every day for the next 90 days. Every evening reflect, if this was so important, was it acted upon in my calendar today? Learn to focus, find an accountability partner, someone who will help hold you accountable, and remember, you don't have to win every hour, you just have to win a few. You'll not win, no one wins every day, but if you win three or four days this week, your life will be appreciably different in a month. And you don't have to win every day and every week in the month, but if you win two and a half to three weeks this month, 
month after month after month in a few years, you're going to be amazed at what you are going to be able to get accomplished. You have been listening to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today this was like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, leave a rating and a brief written review. It will enable other excellent people just like you to locate this podcast. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. You really are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying have a great and blessed day.